Welcome to the Christian Woman Leadership Podcast, where we hope to inspire you to embrace your God-given gifts, skills, and passions in order to lead with confidence. We want you to remember that you are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God, and you are fully loved by Him. You have been designed on purpose by God with unique gifts and passions in order to love and lead those around you. I'm your host, Esther Littlefield, a pastor's wife, business owner, mom, and writer. And I'm Esther's co-host, Holly Kane. I'm a wife, mom, and business owner. I also write at hollycane.org, where I focus on my passion for women's ministry. Together, we chat about important issues that Christian women leaders face. In addition, we interview other women just like you, who lead in various roles, from church to community to business. Through this podcast, we offer you encouragement, tools, and resources to help you on your leadership journey. We are so glad you're here with us. Hey friend, Esther here, and today I want to chat with you about a topic that some of you have shared with me is your experience, and that is what to do when you are surprised by leadership or when you feel unqualified for your leadership role. Before I jump into that topic, though, I want to tell you a little bit about where I'm recording today and give you a little bit of a warning. So I am currently in Texas at an event with a friend and client, and we are having a blast, but I am actually recording this in the little house that I'm staying in. So there might be some noises that normally I don't have when I'm recording at home, and I just want to let you know that up front. I also don't have my normal setup for my microphone, so I'm hoping that this is going to sound okay. But just if you hear anything different, please bear with me. And I hope you'll stick around for the whole episode. So let's get back into what we're going to talk about today. In episode 68, I went through the five stages of confident leadership. But for some of you, you might not struggle with the confidence part at all. In fact, you might be completely confident in God's love for you and who he made you to be and in what your gifts and strengths are. But you might have found yourself in a situation where you are suddenly being placed in a leadership role that you didn't expect, or your kids might be getting older and you may be recognizing that, yes, you are in fact leading those teenagers and that you need to have your leadership game on. They need your leadership and your guidance in a big way during this phase of life. It could be that you've worked in your job for years and you've just been promoted into a supervisory role that you never anticipated. And now instead of just doing your work, which you've always done successfully, you're also responsible to lead a team or to oversee others in their work. Another example might be that you've been happy serving at your church in a behind the scenes kind of way, but God is asking you to step into a new position that involves leadership. So whatever the case is, I believe that there are some of you who are recognizing that you are a leader later in life. You might not have ever considered yourself a leader before, but now you're in this role and you're navigating it and trying to figure out how to fulfill the expectations successfully. So how do we do this? What are some tips to help you accept your leadership role, even when you're surprised by it or feel unqualified for it? Today, that's what I want to talk with you about. I want to give you a few suggestions to help you step into this leadership role that maybe you never anticipated or expected. I want to say one more thing before we do that, though. I want to just make a point that I think that all of us at some point in our lives, even if we have recognized our leadership earlier in life, at some point we feel unqualified or we feel like God has put us in a place that um, we're not ready for. So I hope that this resonates with you, regardless of where you're at currently. I think you either will recognize that this has been where you have been in the past, or it might be where you are right now. So I'm going to give you three suggestions or tips to help you walk into this leadership role and accept what is happening and and hopefully make progress towards thriving in that role, not just um, not just surviving, not just hanging on, but actually thriving. All right. The first thing I want to say is, and the first tip I have for you is, remember that God has brought you to this place. 
So if you are not feeling qualified for your role, or if you feel surprised by it, it is vital to remember that God has brought you to this position or this place. You might be sitting in a room with people that seem like they have figured out exactly what's going on, and you're just winging it or just barely getting by. But God has put you there. You might believe that you're not the right fit for the task or role that God has placed you in, but that is not the case. I love what Jenny Katrin said back in episode 11, and if you haven't listened to that episode, I recommend it. But here is a quote from that episode. You are there. You have been invited. Your gifts have made a way for you. God has opened the door. He has given you this place of influence. It is your job to steward it. So Jenny is reminding us that no matter where we are, no matter where God has placed us, we're there for a reason and we're there on purpose. And so I think what we have to do is we have to come back to making sure that we are trusting God and His sovereignty because he often puts us into places and roles where we will not feel qualified or ready so that we can learn to trust him and rely on his strength. We stop stop being able to rely on our own abilities and skills because we may not really have what it takes to fulfill the role that God has placed us in, but that is where the trust comes in. And that's where relying on his Holy Spirit to guide us comes in. I'll give you an example of this. One of the most challenging leadership roles that I have faced in my life has been my role as a mom. That might sound weird, but to be honest, that has been one of the most difficult leadership roles that I have walked in. And to be honest, there have been times when I was pretty sure that God got his wires crossed. I've often felt unqualified and unprepared for this role. But God and others, thankfully, continually remind me that He has placed me in this role on purpose. He has made me my daughter's mother for a reason, and He has equipped me, and He will continue to provide me with the strength and the wisdom and the guidance necessary for this role. So even when I feel unqualified, even when I feel like I can't keep going, I come back to reminding myself of the truth that God has put me here on purpose. We can look at examples from scripture of how this often happened for other people as well. Many people in scripture who had very significant leadership roles on the outside looked like they were unqualified and they probably felt that way too. So just a couple examples I have for you. One is Moses. You know, he had killed a man and he had a stutter, yet God called him to lead his people out of Egypt. He argued with God about whether he was cut out to do what God was asking him to. David was the youngest of Jesse's sons, and his own father didn't even think to present him to Samuel for consideration to be anointed as king. Yet, David was the one that was chosen to be king. Esther was an orphan girl who probably never dreamed of becoming queen, but she was the one that was chosen to fill that role. Mary was a young, unmarried girl who was asked to bring the Messiah into the world. I can't think of a more significant leadership role than that. And Paul had persecuted Christians prior to his conversion, and then God asked him, to be a missionary to many, many areas, and he himself ended up enduring great suffering. So all of these people on the outside are not the people that we as humans would likely pick to fill the roles that they ended up filling. But God knew what was needed, and God chose them. So you might not be asked to be a king or a queen, that's probably unlikely, and you may not be required to lead thousands of people, But remember that God has placed you in the role where you are for a reason. All right. My second recommendation for you is to find a mentor. So when you find yourself surprised or unqualified for leadership, I think it's really important to find a mentor. A mentor does not have to be someone in your local community or even in the exact type of role or job that you've been given. 
although it can be helpful if you can find someone who fits who fits those qualifications. Um, it's possible if you're in a workplace situation that you might have formal mentoring available to you. So check into that and see if it's an option. But you might need to invest in mentoring if there's something specific you're looking to learn or grow in. But there's also ways that you can receive informal mentoring by following someone from afar, reading or listening to their books or podcasts, or joining a group program that they offer. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. But here's a few thoughts about the type of mentor you can look for, or just kind of like guidelines for finding a mentor. This is not an area of expertise for me, but this is some of the things that I have learned for myself as I have looked for mentors or experienced mentoring in my life. And it's also kind of taken from several of the conversations that I have had on the podcast over the past year and what I've heard other women say as well. So first of all, look for a mentor whose overall life you admire. So don't just look at someone's work or career or ministry role, but also look at how they interact in their personal life. How healthy are their family interactions, their friendships, their relationships outside of work? Ideally, you're going to find a mentor who represents the kind of life that you want to live. Look for a mentor who has the leadership skills that you want to develop. So if you want to become better at leading team meetings or at public speaking, You might want to seek out someone who could be able to guide you in those skills or help you develop them along the way. Look for a mentor whose faith is mature and is in alignment with yours. Now, not everyone's going to agree with me on this, but I think it's wise to follow mentors who are of your same faith and who are more mature in their faith than you are. So, especially since we're talking about developing as a leader, I think it would be really difficult to follow a mentor whose values are not in line with yours. And leadership goes hand in hand with our Christian beliefs and our Christian faith. So it would make the most sense for me to find someone who is on the same page when it comes to faith. And it also can be incredibly powerful to follow someone whose faith is further along or who has been really digging into God's word for a longer time than you have, because they probably have some things that they can share with you when it comes to their faith development that will help you on your leadership journey. Next up, let's recognize that mentoring relationships can change over time. So sometimes you might have a mentor for a certain amount of time and then something changes and you end up developing a mentoring relationship with someone else. So allow your mentoring relationships whenever possible to be flexible, to change and grow organically, and to at times you you may make the decision to move away from a particular mentor if that person no longer is demonstrating the type of faith, or life that you would like to live. For more thoughts on this idea of mentoring, I recommend checking out episode 19 with Elisa Pulliam. She provides some excellent practical tips on incorporating mentoring in your life, and I would recommend definitely going back and listening to that episode if you have not done so already. Okay, my next tip for you is to actually develop your leadership skills. So once you recognize that God has placed you into a leadership role, it's important to be intentional about developing as a leader. This can be very different from person to person based on your role, your strengths and weaknesses, and your personality. But I'm going to give you some general guidelines on ways to develop your leadership skills. And I'm a big believer in honestly assessing where you currently stand in terms of your leadership stage, as well as your strengths, and then to take action from there based on where you're at currently. So let's jump into some of these recommendations on how you can develop your leadership skills. First of all, you could take the Confident Leader Stages quiz. Now, I talked about this in episode 68, where I walked through the five stages of confident leadership, which is my idea and framework for how we can go from being a reluctant leader to a confident leader. So you can go over to 
estralittlefield.com slash leader quiz, or just click the, the link in the show notes and take the quiz. And then you'll get some suggestions for ways to take your next steps in leadership. Next, I would recommend that you take the Strengths Finder assessment. We've talked about this before, but this is definitely one of my favorite tools to figure out how I can best use my natural gifts and strengths to serve in whatever role that I am in. So the Strengths Finder assessment will give you um, your top five strengths. The basic assessment will do that. And this is going to help you understand what comes naturally to you, what your strengths are that you can offer to the world. And it's really going to help you figure out in whatever role God has placed you in, how can you use those gifts and those strengths to serve others and to serve God in that in that situation. To take this assessment, you can go right online and take it, and I'll put the link in the notes. But I actually recommend buying the book or one of the books that are related to Strengths Finder. You get an access code, plus you still have the book that you can read to go along with it. And you just want to make sure that the book is new when you buy it, because if you buy an uh, old book or a used book, you might end up finding that the access code is already used up, and that's no fun. So there are also some coaches who specialize in the Strengths Finder. Jenny Schubring from episode nine is one of them. And I would recommend going and taking a listen to that episode with her to find out more about Strengths Finder and how you can incorporate it into your leadership. And then if you need some coaching around it, check in with her or look for another coach who specializes in that tool. Next, in terms of developing your leadership skills, I would recommend asking for feedback. So yes, I know we've talked about this before on the podcast, but it really is important. You can ask for feedback from people who are currently in your sphere of influence, who maybe you are leading in some capacity or who you simply have a close relationship with. It helps to ask specific questions that you want feedback on. Like, how am I doing with my communication or how am I doing with leading meetings? You know, whatever it might be, you might want to come up with some specific questions that you can ask. Also, you want to keep in mind that you're looking for areas for improvement when it comes to your leadership skills and abilities. You could also consider taking feedback anonymously because this would help people be more honest. And Brian Dixon talks about this in his book, Start With Your People, which I just read. And he gives some really good insight into how to do that and how it impacted his life and his experience. So I would recommend checking that book out. And again, I'm going to put the links for everything that I mentioned in the show notes for this episode. All right, next up, let's talk about our our next recommendation. Determine what leadership skills you want to develop. So we've kind of talked about like figuring out where you're at, where your strengths and weaknesses lie. Now let's figure out where you want to develop. So you might want to determine what leadership skills are going to be necessary for the role that you are fulfilling. There may or may not be a job description or something else that's going to guide you in this area. If there is, go ahead and get a look at that job description and use that as a tool to help you figure out what leadership skills you should be focusing on. But if you don't have that, you could go back to episode two, where Holly and I talk about what leadership is and is not. And we actually put a list of 14 things that we believe are needed for the leadership role. I'm not going to list them out right now, but I will put them all in the show notes so you can take a look at them because that's been a long time since that episode came out. But again, you could go back and take a listen to that. I'm just going to mention a couple of them that really stood out to me. Uh, One of them is doing things that other people won't do. Another one is listening. And another one is bringing clarity. So those are a few examples of some skills and some abilities that as leaders, we should be developing, we should be able to demonstrate. So again, take a listen to that conversation and you might wanna jot down two to three areas where you feel you would like to improve. For me, 
the areas where I want to improve out of this list of 14 is seeing potential in others, communicating a vision, and celebrating wins. Those are areas where I feel like I need to improve and look for ways to incorporate more of that in my leadership. All right, next up, we want to talk about investing in professional or personal development in order to grow in the skills that you need. So there are a lot of ways you can invest in development for these things. And again, depending on your work situation, some of this might be incorporated into your job role or position, even your volunteer role. If it's uh, volunteer roles, sometimes do include some training. So check out the availability of those things. But for many of us, professional and personal development is going to come out of our own pocket or out of our own time. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing because I think when we have to put time or money into investing in something, we are more likely to take use and advantage of it. So I'm going to run through a few ideas from free or low cost on up to something that you might end up investing, you know, a significant amount of money in. So the first one is books. Of course, books are such an easy way to develop your skills and understanding of leadership. There are many amazing books on leadership, principles and skills that you can start to read and then put those things into practice. I always like to, when I'm reading a book, I always like to find one or two things that I actually want to implement into my life because it is one thing to read the book, but if we don't incorporate uh, you know, one of the skills or one of the practices or principles into our life, then it's not that useful. So make sure you keep track of what you're wanting to incorporate into your life when you read. A couple books that I would recommend to get started if you haven't read them already is The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership by John Maxwell. And um, that's just like a classic leadership book. John Maxwell has so many books on leadership. You can find many, many more, but that's one of my favorites. And then I also love The Four Dimensions of Extraordinary Leadership by Jenny Catron. And again, I mentioned her earlier. We had her on episode 11 of the podcast. And her book is excellent, especially from a Christian perspective of leadership and how to how to lead well in whatever role you're in. So again, keep in mind with books, you can often get these from the library. You might be able to borrow them from a friend. Your church might have some of these. So, you know, again, you don't have to invest a lot of money to get started in learning. All right, next up, we have podcasts. Of course, you're listening to this podcast, so I already know you are taking a step in the right direction. Uh, But I love listening to podcasts as a way to gain professional and personal development. I really love and recommend listening to podcasts related to what you want to learn. As a podcast junkie, I tend to have a lot of podcasts that I'm subscribed to, but I do try to sometimes focus on, you know, what area am I needing to learn something about or develop in, and then looking for those episodes that are going to help me in that particular area. So for example, you know, if you're wanting to get better at leading teams or developing a better work culture, then you might look for podcasts or episodes related to that particular skill. Okay, next, another way to develop your leadership skills is to join a course or a membership. So there are sometimes courses or memberships that will be available online that will help you to grow in a particular leadership area. So there are just, and the world of online courses has grown (laughs) exponentially in the past five to 10 years. There are things for just about everything you can imagine, but you know, time management, communication, um, team culture, like you can probably find a course for just about anything. Now, when you join a course or a membership, make sure that you are familiar with the course teacher or the person offering the course, because you need to make sure that it's again in alignment. It's kind of like you're going to be mentored by that person if you're investing in their uh, resource. So make sure you are familiar with what they offer, uh, what their free stuff has been, and also just make sure that it's a 
it's a person, a trustworthy person that you want to learn from. But another example is joining a membership that would help you to be connected to other people who are in a similar role or a similar situation as you, and often that will provide you with ongoing training and support. So as an example, of course, I have the Confident Leader Club, which is for Christian women who want to grow as leaders. We have a library of trainings to help you develop as a leader, but also you get the chance to connect with other women who are at a similar place in their lives. So another thing that I have in that club is access to my confident leader path, which helps you to understand the three aspects of becoming a confident leader and deepen your faith and move you along in that leadership journey. So that's an example of one way that you can invest. All right, next up we have masterminds or networks. Another option is just to find a mastermind or a network of um, people or a group that you could join that would be helping you to develop in the skills that you want to grow in. And again, for me as an example, this has looked like joining a speaking mastermind recently. This is an area that I want to grow in. I want to become better at speaking and find more ways that I can incorporate that into what I'm doing. So I joined a mastermind that would help me grow as a public speaker. Next, you could attend events. This is another great option to grow in your leadership skills by looking for events related to the specific skills you want to develop, or you might be looking for events related to your particular industry. So if you're stepping into ministry or church leadership, you might be looking for events, again, designed specifically for church leaders. If you're becoming a foster parent, you might look for events that are geared towards parenting or even more specifically foster parenting so that you can learn what you need to know for this new role that you're stepping into. Events are also a great way to connect with people who are dealing with similar challenges as you, and they're often a good way to develop lifelong relationships. I have met some people at events that I've ended up connecting with over a long term because you're there doing something that you're both trying to learn about or grow in. And it's just a great way to kind of connect and um, develop your network. All right. Another way and the last way that I'm going to mention right now is um, group coaching or one-on-one coaching. So investing in coaching out of all the things that I've shared is probably one of the more expensive things that you might do. But coaching can often come in either this group format or a one-to-one format. And typically in group coaching, you're gonna be receiving coaching from the leader of the group alongside several other people. Sometimes it might just be five to 10 other people. Sometimes it could be a larger group. That's good information to have before you get started. But either way, you're gonna be in a group setting. So you're not necessarily going to be getting one-on-one feedback from the coach, but you are gonna be getting some really good training and and, uh, development based on what this coach is teaching you. In one-to-one, you're obviously going to get that specific one-on-one interaction and feedback from the coach. That person might be holding you accountable to specific actions that you need to do, or they might be helping you to see things from a different perspective. So again, with this type of thing, with masterminds, with group coaching, one-on-one coaching, make sure that you're really familiar with the person that you are investing in before you join, because It can be um, a lot of money if you invest in something like this and find out that you don't really resonate with the person's style, with what they're teaching, or just isn't even what you need to learn right now. So I hope that this discussion has been helpful for you, especially if you are feeling inadequate or unprepared for your leadership role. I think that no matter what, we have all been there at some point. And I want you to remember that your leadership matters. Your voice, your gifts, what God has put inside of you to offer the world, it matters and we need it. So friend, I do not want you to shrink back or decline this calling or role that God has given you. Instead, I want you to step into it. So the three points that I gave you today 
to help you when you are feeling surprised or inadequate are remember that God has placed you where you are, find a mentor, and then develop your leadership skills. Thank you so much for listening today. I really hope that this episode encouraged you. If it did, go ahead and let me know. It's always so fun when I hear feedback about the episodes because it helps me to know that we are giving you content that is being beneficial in your life. The best way to do that is actually to come into our Purposeful Leadership Facebook group and just share what you heard in this episode. We have something called Thursday Takeaways. And every Thursday we will post and you can share your takeaways from the episode. So we would love to have your feedback on each week's episode. And again, if there's anything that I can do for you or that you feel like you would like to share with me privately, you can also email me and that is podcast at estherlittlefield.com. Thanks for listening today, friend, and I will talk to you next week. Thanks for joining us on the Christian Women Leadership Podcast. Do you want to become a more confident leader? Then make sure to grab the Confident Leader Manifesto. This is a resource that Holly and I developed just for you, and I share all about it in Episode 6, Leading with Confidence. You can get the manifesto for yourself at estherlittlefield.com slash confident, and that's confident with a T. Now don't forget, your leadership matters, and it's time for you to embrace your gifts and lead with confidence.